as humanity grows ever more populous and powerful. Natural systems that have been stable for millions of years are in turmoil. Plant and animal populations are rapidly declining, and species are becoming extinct faster than ever before. Scientists have begun to call this a mass extinction event. The last recorded truly mass extinction was about 65 million years ago, presumably because an asteroid hit Earth, the dinosaurs went extinct, and lots of other organisms went extinct, and we're now starting into another mass extinction, except this time it's not an asteroid, it's our own species, Homo sapiens, that's doing the job. Most of us know there's an environmental crisis, and we'd even say we're very concerned about it, but we behave as if it's not happening. I think what has been missing for some time is the realization that this is a human issue, that if in one century we've gone from two billion to six billion people, clearly the space of the planet is being deeply affected. We are very ignorant to the full effects of our actions. We need to do some deep re-examination of our fundamental assumptions of how we live our life in this society. It's people carrying out the most basic of human activities that's causing all these things that we share the planet with to disappear forever. It's hard to relate to that, to realize that just in these little life activities of ours, we're driving into oblivion these beautiful other life forms that have evolved for millions of years and that are our only known living companions in the universe. The global human family faces enormous challenges, yet we're beginning to see a bigger picture and finally hearing what scientists have been telling us for years, that habitat destruction, the climate crisis, pollution and other factors multiplied by the growing human population are driving our fellow creatures to extinction so rapidly that entire ecosystems may face irreversible chain reaction collapse. how many species we share the planet with. Our ballpark estimate would be about 10 million. We're likely to wipe out about half of that in this century that we're all living in right now. If our influence on Earth continues to expand, I think we're likely to lose half or more of the species on Earth. The most uh, dire numbers, I think, are on the time scale of about 35 years. It is really very difficult, in, in, the, in, in my experience, to persuade people that something that may happen in 50 years' time is something they should worry about today. This is extraordinarily short-sighted and, and extraordinarily foolish and is a complete contradiction of the idea that it was human intelligence that made us successful. We do not use the very evolutionary uh, attribute that brought us to where we are. Now, if you ask the question, how many human beings might die because of the loss of biodiversity, we could easily be talking about billions because we depend on biodiversity for a wide range of ecosystem services, which if they falter, we're gonna be in deep trouble. We cannot live without many of these other creatures. I don't think we in any way should feel complacent that we are not on the list of possible extinctions. There's an entirely different dimension to the problem than just let's preserve the bison or the panda or the golden eagle or the bald eagle or whatever. It's all part of the same system and it's all part of preserving our life support system. Extinctions have profound consequences for humans. No species is an island. Biological communities are real communities of very complex but very serious interdependencies. And when you remove species, there will be effects. Plants that uh, ameliorate the climate, bacteria that break down waste products are essential to the maintenance of all life on Earth. 
the extinction problem is not just a problem of loss of species, it's a problem also of loss of populations because it's the populations that deliver the ecosystem services. If there's one population of honeybees alive in Italy and they're extinct over the rest of the planet, that's not gonna help you pollinate your alfalfa in Idaho. When we wipe out populations and species of other organisms, we're sawing off the limb that we're sitting on. Mass extinction is so far removed from human experience, we lack the cultural structures, the language, or even the imagination to envision such a nightmare. What we're talking about here with extinction is a kind of unraveling of the fabric of life. Just the shock of that, you know, the sense of there's something going on here that's so threatening to my sense of well-being that I have to shut it out in some way. And everybody, I think, experiences that. I know many times when, when I was uh, initially reading about extinction, I would hear these overwhelming statistics, you know, three to ten species going extinct every day. And I didn't know how to wrap my mind around these overwhelming statistics. Uh, what, what do you do when you find that out? Now, wait a minute, doctor. Steve, you wait a minute. It's, I think, beyond anything that humans have had to face ever before. And so the magnitude of what we're trying to do in terms of getting past this denial is quite large. Human thought is the source of our problems and is the source of our solutions. Until we address our way of thinking and our whole framework and orientation, we're going to continue to make mistakes. What I want you to do is to work on your attitude. My attitude? That's right. When you think about it, what does our culture offer us in the way of wisdom to deal with any kind of difficulty? Our cultural wisdom is, by this, it'll make you happy. We need to have a new definition of progress, of the good life. Our senses have become attenuated in relation to nature. All of this is about reconnecting, re-relating to the fibers of our world. I feel that there is an invisible thread of compassion between people of like minds who are critically concerned about this issue, who are finding each other, who are creating alliances, who are creating organizations, who are creating a movement, a movement of survival, a movement of recovery. And it's happening all over the world. Cultural evolution can go on extremely rapidly. In fact, it's going on right now. When the time is right, societies can change with incredible rapidity. We care about life. We care about the next generations. We need to bring this to bear in a radical, fiery, dynamic, and committed way. This is a critical, pivotal moment in history. I can feel it every day. It's almost like a pressure cooker. Things are, are shifting and changing. We're either going to uh, wake up or, or die. We don't know which one it's going to be. It's not too late. We have all that it takes to care for the world we inherited. We have only to make up our minds to do it and answer the call.